Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I do the draw for the little set of Whitworth taps. The bucket's here, so I might as well do it now because there's only, only me at home. I'm going to learn again. Very right, good stir up. There's a one. Very right, strange name. Coffee. 8070. I don't like proper names, but I suppose Coffee 8070 is certainly unique. All you need to do is send me an email with your address and I'll get that posted off to you straight away. I'm going to do another draw this week. This week's draw is going to be for a nice little Mercer DTI gauge, a nice small gauge. I had three of these sent. Um, I've got one, my friend Bob wanted one, and I'm going to give one away. I'll get a close-up shot of that a little bit later. As always, if you want a chance to win that Mercer gauge, all you have to do is send me an email with your full name, like John Mills, not just John. That's my email up there. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post it off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. As I keep saying, it's just a little bit of giving something back for all the help and support I've had. Anyway, thanks very much for that. In tonight's nightcap, I get a bit more work done on the vertical steam engine. Basically, get the bottom end ready to, to put the crank in for real this time. I also do some machine on the lathe. I machine some uh, car wheel bearing out of tracks to use for pressing wheel bearings in at work. Uh, these are really hard material, so it was interesting to see what sort of speeds and feeds I was able to use to get the lathe to machine material. Anyway, I hope you find it interesting. I'm gonna. Assemble the bottom end of the steam engine for real now. I've decided not to paint this casting, just wash it off in oil it and leave it the way it is. One thing I don't need to do when I made the crankshaft, I put a drilling in there and the crank's actually cross drilled into the big end so the oil feeds the big end from that main bearing. What I need to do is fill in that oil drill in there and there's also a one in there. I could drill and tap that and put a plug in. I can't get into that one. So what I'm going to do is just fill the holes in with some twin pack epoxy, which means if I ever need them out, uh, an airline it would blow them out. There's no pressure on there, it's just lubricating oil that actually runs through. So the first thing to do is wash the galleries out, get them nice and clean, and then put a little bit of twin pack epoxy in the two holes just to stop the oil from, from leaking out. It's getting very near to steam engine rally season and the idea to take this away to steam rallies and run it off Richard's central steam wagon boiler. Possibly driving a generator, uh, I'm not quite sure. Put some solid in here just to, to clean the holes out. See how it works, it actually goes right through. And then when you blank that one off, the oil will, in theory, go through there and come out of the big end like that.
I think if this was back in the 18th century they would have used some horrible mixture of white lead and tallow or whatever to do with this. It won't take much. Just a little a little blob of glue will be enough to, to blank them off. We don't want to blank the port off altogether. Little small amount of glue like that and that'll just simply onto there. And the same with the other one. I'm going to let that go hard. And obviously we'll check it with the airline to make sure that we have got an oil passage through there. Right, we'll put that away. And that'll go hard. You need to make sure that's as nice and clean before it's assembled. You want no bit of dirt and grit in there. Dirt and grit and bearings just don't, don't mix. These studs aren't the best. Uh, there's one of them state at a state angle. I could drill out and tap them and heli coil them or whatever, but I'm trying to leave as much of the engine original. Um, I don't want to completely restore it or completely re -wait. In fact, it's not a restoration job, it's a, it's a finish you off somebody's build job. But I don't want to take away any work that's already been done. I want to try and leave it as much as possible the way it was. I'm just doing enough to make it run satisfactorily. Bearings have got marks on them. These bearings originally were they were reamed in position. And these are the oilers that were made, which work really nicely. So they've got bays on them. The other ones have got ears on them, strangely enough. So, once that seal has gone hard in the crank, we'll put the crank into here, tighten it up, set it up, and then finish assembling the engine. There's quite a few gaskets to make for this engine. The thing is on a steam engine, they're not called gaskets, they're called joints, so I've been informed. So I've got some gasket material here, some joint material, made in England. I don't know when, but it probably was made in England. Uh, I'm going to cut a piece out, roughly the size, and then once the engine is assembled, we're going to trim it to be a, a good fit. So we've got a piece here. I need to put the, the holes in for the the studs. All these holes are pissed basically that oval that not in line but they do they do fit on the engine. 
there's nothing much I can do with that. It'll, it'll work perfectly all right the way it is. It's just the way it's the way it's been made. Some of the machine on this engine is really good, and some of the machine is really really bad. Right, so we need to transfer those holes. That's several ways of doing it. You can, you can put that on there. You can top round with a a ball bearing, or you can. What I want to do is just try and drill straight through using a using a milling cutter just to spot each hole and turn. Acceptable. I'm sure you can trim wrong with a knife once it's once it's on. There's a hole to go on the inside. See I've marked the top because none of the holes are in the same position so it's all I was probably all guess of it when they put them in. This is what they call a gland or a stuffing box. As a packing material goes into there, that goes up onto it and squeezes the material to form a nice tight seal on the spindle. It only goes in one way because it's been handmade and that's the way it goes. It's actually got a little letter E on there, a letter E on there. I've got some packing material here. This is the real I am stuff, graphite impregnated, yarn of some type. In the good old days it would have been graphite impregnated asbestos. But now it'll be some modern material. Saying that this could this is quite old it is possibly asbestos so we're not gonna we're making any dust from it. It's possibly enough actually. Trim it off at that. It's 
so that goes into the into there as you tighten the nuts up it squeezes the packing and forms a steam tight seal I'll not squeeze it too tight until we get it actually assembled that's it's gripping it there now Still with a bigger adjustable spanner, I suppose. No, I mean. Okay, that's gripping it now. I, mean, I had thought about making a new, a new valve rod because this is, it's rough, but it'll do the job. I don't want to I could make a stainless steel one but this is this is the way it was made that's what I want to try and keep it the machine on the actual valve is very good really good it's strange there's obviously different people have done different parts of this engine build possibly at different times I don't know the stuff is good really good the stuff is bad, really bad. Anyway. Who's this bastard here? Hi, my name's John. 